Once again, your local movie theater has been overrun with damn dirty apes in the third installment in this rebooted franchise, War for the Planet of the Apes. Brought to you by the same writer-director combo from the last movie, Mark Bomback and Matt Reeves, and starring Andy Serkis and Woody Harrelson. Caesar and his tribe of apes are still trying to live out a peaceful existence in the woods, and his own family has grown recently with the addition of a new young son who he named Cornelius, in a nice nod to the original. But the humans just will not leave them alone because they're assholes, and realizing an all-out war with the humans is inevitable if they stay where they are, Caesar and company hatch a plan to move the apes out of the forest and into a faraway desert, where they will hopefully be free to live out their lives without being bothered by those damn humans. But when tragedy strikes, Caesar and a small party of his closest allies go on a quest to stop the human army once and for all. And they won't just have humans to contend with, as some apes who were formerly loyal to Koba, the villain from the last movie, have joined forces with the humans. As I said, this is the third movie since the franchise was rebooted, and... I liked Rise of the Planet of the Apes quite a bit, really liked Dawn, and I would say War is at least on par with Dawn, which I suppose I should expect, given that this came from the same people who made that movie. It still looks fantastic, the sets, the environments, the special effects, this movie looks downright gorgeous. Andy Serkis is still fantastic in his role as Caesar, and I really like this continuation of his story and the quest aspects. Of course, you still have your big ape versus human battles, and they look great, and your occasional human versus human battles as well, because... As previously established, we are assholes. But Caesar's quest is really the main focus of the story, and honestly, you could probably call this movie Fellowship of the Apes. It's, it would fit pretty well. You got a small band of heroes on a quest to stop this big bad who threatens to destroy everything they know and love. And the leader of the party is not just fighting the big bad, but also himself as he seems to be headed down a much darker path. Caesar, of course, loves his people and would do anything to protect them, but sometimes anything involves some pretty questionable stuff, and it makes others and even himself wonder if he's starting to turn into Koba. And it certainly doesn't help that Koba is still hanging around in a way. Not literally, he's still dead, but he is haunting Caesar's nightmares. And really, how could he not? You don't soon forget a face like that. And of course, as they go on their journey, they make some new friends along the way. They meet a slightly eccentric chimpanzee who apparently escaped from a zoo and learned how to speak on his own, but never learned sign language, so there are a few communications problems in the group. And he goes by the name Bad Ape. I assume because that's what the humans called him, so he just assumed that was his name. He was kind of a weird guy. And they meet a little girl who Maurice names Nova in another nice little nod to the original. And for reasons they discover later on, she is unable to speak. Not because she's physically incapable of speech, but something up here just ain't quite working right. And if you remember the original movie, you can probably see where they're going with this. Nova is played by Amaya Miller, and she's basically adopted by Maurice, and those two are adorable together. And it is remarkable what Amaya is able to do with her performance, despite having no lines of dialogue in the film. At least no spoken lines of dialogue, a little bit of sign language. Full credit goes to that kid, she's got talent. And I did enjoy the man versus nature aspect of this film. There is a point where Woody Harrelson's character says, the reason that the apes became so smart in the first place is because man tried to control nature and bend it to his will. And now nature is fighting back. And this pays off in a big way at the end. The movie is not without its flaws. There are some new characters that are introduced, but some of them are not developed all that well. And there seemed to be a pattern with this movie where if a new character shared a tender moment with another character, it wasn't long before one of the two ended up dead. And I did notice a couple of moments where the apes seem to be communicating to each other using sign language without actually looking at each other. The only way that works is if you're a telepath, and if that's the case, why the fuck are you using sign language? You're a telepath. And is it just me, or was this movie kind of a sausage fest? It's not that there aren't any female actors or characters in the movie. There are, but except for Nova, 
they're almost all hidden behind motion capture. And I certainly don't want to discount the hard work the motion capture artist put into this movie, especially Karen Conneval, who's played Maurice in all three movies and has done a fantastic job, but I did think that was a bit odd. It's not something I noticed right away, but once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it, you know? Also, I really like Woody Harrelson, but I thought he was perhaps a bit miscast here. His character, the Colonel, no name, just the Colonel, is very dark and sinister and quiet and calm and... That just doesn't really play to his strengths. And it's not that Harrelson was phoning in his performance or anything. Far from it. I don't know if he's capable of doing that. He was fine. It's just maybe someone else would have been a better fit for this character. But I still enjoyed this very much, and I would definitely recommend checking this one out on the big screen, especially if you were a fan of the previous two movies. And it'll be interesting to see where they go from here. If they decide to continue the series or just end it here or possibly take another stab at remaking the original. They did more or less set the stage for the world that Taylor landed in in the original film, with the ape colony out in the desert and the primitive mute humans, so... They seem to at least be giving themselves that option. We'll see if anything actually comes of it. And if they do take a stab at it, well... It can't be worse than the Tim Burton film. And that's all I got to say about War for the Planet of the Apes. Till next time, take care.